here you can see the setup of the double bridge experiment. It contains a binary bridge connecting a nest of ants and a food source. The bridge here has two branches of equal lengths converging at the food source. In the beginning you can see that the ants do not have a preference and choose both the branches randomly. This is because there's no pheromones on either of the branches. But with time, there is a preference for one of the branches. This is because larger the number of ants on a branch, larger will be the amount of pheromones on that branch. This larger amount of pheromones in turn stimulates more ants to choose that branch again and so on until finally the ants converge to one single path. Each trial of the experiment was conducted for a period of 5 minutes. From the videos, the number of ants choosing each path was calculated for every minute. Here you can see the graphs plotted for the percentage of ants choosing each path during different time periods. In 2 out of 3 trials, the ants converge to path 2. If enough trials are conducted, the ants converge to a particular path in 50% of trials when the paths are of equal length. To study whether ants are capable of finding the shortest path to a source of food, two other kinds of bridges were also used. The bridge shown in the middle has two paths of unequal length and the bridge on the right has two paths of equal length and the path in the middle is shorter than the two. Initially, both the short and long paths are chosen randomly but eventually the ants converge to the shorter path. By the end of 5 minutes of the experiment, almost all the ants choose the shorter path. The mean and standard deviation of the number of ants choosing a path every minute were calculated and plotted. For the experiment with two paths of unequal length, an unpaired t-test was performed to determine if there is a significant difference between the average number of ants choosing the two paths during different periods of time. For the experiment with three paths, an ANOVA test or analysis of variance test was conducted. The t-test and the ANOVA test say that the differences in means of the different paths are statistically significant in the later part of the experiment when the pheromones have been well accumulated. Therefore, upon pheromone accumulation, the null hypothesis can be rejected in favor of the alternate hypothesis which states that the differences in the number of ants choosing the different paths are statistically significant. Graphs were also plotted to visualize the temporal evolution of percentage of ants choosing a path over 5 minutes. You can see that for the shorter path, the percentage of ants increases and for the longer paths, the percentage of ants decreases with time. Therefore, through this study, it can be concluded that ant colonies have the capability of efficiently accomplishing complex tasks. They are capable of finding the shortest route from their nest to a food source and convey this information to other foragers through trail pheromones. This way, they can accomplish efficient foraging. Thank you.